you need to begin with your diagram. I know they supply a diagram to you, by which I mean I supplied a diagram to you. But the act of creating the diagram is critical to knowing what's going on, okay? So humor me, humor your own brain, and draw yourself up a diagram. Here's where we're at. <clears throat> the straight section of a river, it's three kilometers wide, so that gives us, well, my river is not very straight, but you get the idea. And I have a few points here, right? I have H, which is where I'm trying to get to. I have B, the boat shed, where I start. I have A, a point directly opposite. And then I have P, a point in between the directly opposite point and my destination that I could row to and then do the walk from there, okay? I have some totals. I have 10 kilometers all the way along the shore there. And very helpfully, they hold your hand an incredible amount in this question, right? They even give you the variable here and say, call that x, okay? And then the parts that ensue, they walk you through the process of trying to craft a solution to this, right? Part one, state the expression for the length of pH. Just state, okay? I'm even gonna be so lazy, I'm gonna put it just on my diagram, right? If this is 10, and I'm taking away x, which is that difference there, right, then this is going to be 10 take away x. Okay, I'll put that in a new color. 10 take away x, and that's in kilometers. Okay? You can see where these are all going to come in, right? Part two, show that the total time, t hours, taken by Jerry to reach his destination is, and then they give you this result. Okay? So, for instance, you can see the 10 minus x that we just determined. It appears in the result we're about to try and prove. It's divided by 5. Why is it divided by 5? That's speed, right? That's the speed. So at some point, because this is a show question, at some point I would expect you to say something like, um, uh, what am I after? Uh, distance <coughs> is speed times time. Or, you know, there's many different combinations of this, right? You need to show that relationship somehow, because otherwise, your 10 minus x on 5, it just literally appears from thin air. But you must show this, right? Now, this is legitimate. This is okay, right? So, for instance, I can say, off of the basis of this, for this little interval pH, right? For pH, I'm going to make this statement about that particular interval, right? The distance is 10 take away x. The speed is 5. And the time is, well, I don't know what the time is. We'll call it t. Have they given me, uh, no. That's capital T that I'm trying to find. So this is just the, the first little one. I'll call that T1, I suppose. Right? So from this, that's how I can make the statement. Therefore, T1 equals 10 take away x on 5. It doesn't come from nowhere. Okay, that's critically important. Likewise, I need to get the time for this distance, right? So how are we going to do that? <coughs> what do we appeal to? What geometry do we appeal to? We appeal to Pythagoras, right? You've got this right angle already given to you on the diagram, right? Um, you already know that this is 3. So by Pythagoras, what is this length here? Um, square root of? x squared plus 9, or based on, I think, the way that they're asking for it, 9 plus x squared. That's fine. So in the same way here, I would say, uh, likewise or similarly, for this distance, BP, I'm going to make exactly the same statement with the different distance and the different speed. Okay, so I'm going to say, here's my distance, <coughs> sorry, equals speed times time, except my speed is different now, right? Because I am rather a slower rower than a walker. Okay, I've labeled this a different time because they haven't given me any names for this, but I know it's different to this one, right? So therefore, t2 equals the square root. So from there, t is just the sum of those times, right? <clears throat> it's reasonable to say, okay, if I want the total time, I've got to transfer here and then to here, right? Therefore, t equals t1 plus t2, and the next line is the result that they've asked for, right? Dot, 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 as required. Okay, this is, um, this is two marks, right? Two marks. One mark, two marks. If what you have in here is briefer, then I don't know if you've actually shown what's going on, right? It seems kind of obvious. 
to state this, right? But then again, what else are they asking you to show? <coughs> so be careful about how you, what actual work you, you put out. Okay, part three. Again, they are super holding your hand. They say, and this is the question you were asking, Jack, right? What values can X take? What values can X take? Okay. Now, strictly speaking, X can be anything you like. X could even, and I'm sort of stretching the definition here, X could even be negative, okay? Um, if this is X here, then I guess negative X would go this way, okay? However, it's kind of pointless, right? It's kind of pointless because if X is negative, I'm going further away from, I'm not getting any closer to H at all, right? So therefore, I could exclude it quite easily from the domain. So the closest I would get to here is just straight across. What value would X have if I went straight to A? It'd be zero, right? Now in the same way, my alternative is, and I'll get another color here, my alternative is I think A, uh, sorry, X, bigger. And now I could go straight there. If I went straight to H by rowing, what would the value of X be? Ten. It would be 10. Now again, just playing the game. X could be bigger if I wanted to. It could be 12 or 15 or 20, but again, it's kind of, what's the point? I'm going past H and then doubling back. That's clearly not within the domain that I'm actually interested in. Okay? So all you really need to state is that 0 is less than x is less than 10. It's just a statement. It's just a mark. Okay? So that's where I got that from. I got it from this diagram, and they're not asking you to supply any more reasoning for why. 